Hello folks, I'm Dan. Working on a little Remington of mine. Um, I need an action wrench. I've got a, a project going on where I'm pulling a barrel and putting a barrel back in. Actually, just putting a barrel back in is all I need this for. Um, on the little Remington 540, 580, 590 series guns. And what it is, is those guns originally were a little rimfire gun. They were chambered in 22 long rifle and um, 5 millimeter rimfire. And they're a nice little gun, nice compact as you'd expect a 22 to be. Uh, very nicely built for the little 22s. Uh, there's a little bolt action. And what we've done is, um, over the years, I've converted several of those to centerfire. And the latest rendition of that is, is I've done a couple in 5.7 by 28 caliber. I need an action wrench to put them back together with. And I was going through my action wrenches that I built over the years, and I can get by with what I've got, which is what I've done. But I think I've got enough going on with this that it justifies building a building an action wrench. So I just thought I'd share what's going on with these. And these are my action wrenches here that I've built over the years. I've got two handles, this one, and then I've got a larger one, which is, accepts these heads. Um, and over the years, I've built, I think I've got 17 or 18 heads here, plus the flat coppers I just use mainly for lever actions is what I've used them for. I started building these back when I first started gunsmithing in my own shop and when you don't have anything else to do you better be building better be building tooling because you can't afford to, to um, buy all of it. So what we're gonna do is build a head for this. I already got it uh, cut squared off, cut the same length and everything and throw some die cam on there. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up in the mill. We're gonna pop a couple of half inch holes down through the top for alignment. Then we'll set it up and we'll bore it. I think I'm probably gonna bore it just over an inch and I'll go a little bit over that uh, receiver dimension size because I think I'll, uh, when I use that, I will just line it with some lead sheet. On these little round receivers like that, they don't take a whole lot of torque anyway. And um, if you're working on something that's already been blued or, or already finished on it or polished even, before it's blued why you don't really want to mar it up. So on these little round receivers, a couple ways you can do it. You could uh, go ahead and drill through the top to take a standard screw, which is quarter 28, I believe. Quarter, I think it's quarter 28 in these little Remingtons. Um, you can go ahead and slot that to index it up and everything. I don't really like to torque those little receivers off of the off of the guard screw holes like that because you could uh, could foreseeably tweak the action a little bit in that area or strip those screws out and deform them. So um, we'll get probably plenty of plenty of gripping force for what we need to do just by lining it with a little bit of lead sheet. So we'll go, oh, probably if we're doing 1.01, I'll probably go 1.125 is about what we'll bore it to. Something there's not real critical. We'll just get a crush on the on the lead liner in there into the receiver, and you sprinkle a little rosin in there to help grip it, just like you do in the in the um, barrel vise to hold the barrel itself and that gives you plenty of plenty of torque to put on there so anyway we'll set this up in the mill find centers on them and go ahead and pop some holes
Okay, there's the first half done. We'll just rinse and repeat on that one. So there's the second one. So now we've got both our halves. And what I will do is I'll go ahead and deburr these a little bit. We'll um, assemble them together. And then we'll set them back up. And end with them together. And go ahead and bore our center, center diameter up. There's a pair right there. All right. Well, what I've done is I've clamped the two halves together, gone to a longer set of parallels underneath, and we just got a bolt in place. We already had our left-right position because we already had a stop set up, and um, I just moved to the center with a spot drill, just visually. Um, dropped it in there. It's not that critical. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drill it out as close as I can get it and then we'll have to set up a boring head and I may have a clearance issue with the boring head. We'll see if my small boring head will fit in there. Yeah, that should be right at one inch or just a little bit over. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and set up the boring head and get that ready to go. And we'll get this board out. And then all we've got to do is deburr it, finish stamping it. And oh, we'll clean it up a little bit, polish it up a little bit, because next time I run the bluing tank, so I will throw them in there. One point one five. I think we're going to call that good. That's just enough oversized that we'll get a nice little crush fit with a with a lead liner around it, and uh, I think that'll work real well. Let's see how it actually. Yeah, one, well, 1.153, how are we over here? One point one five oh five. 1.151. 
not a bad bore. A little more, a little more deeper on it. And uh, we'll clean the mill scale off. And go ahead and stamp what it's for. And uh, put our name in it. And we'll be good to go. Well, we decided to do something a little bit different here. I started stamping the numbers and stuff in it. But I thought while we're playing here, we might just as well engrave it. So what I've done is I put my little Tormex scratch engraver in with the CNC. Uh, I've kind of polished off this face. It's not a perfect face, but we've smoothed it down so it's fairly smooth and, and legible anyway. Got a fairly nice finish on it. So this is a drag engraver. So I've already programmed it in with the lettering that I've got. I've got the setup, I think, right, although we haven't run it yet. So all we've got to do is hit the start button and... Um, Hopefully our engraving will go all as it should. Okay, well, other than a little bobble right there at the end where we didn't do a retract, let's see what she looks like. Yeah, I got a couple little bobbles there that are a little bit off. Let's see if we can we can show you. Normally on these, on stuff like this, let's see if we can get. Yeah, there we got a little bit of the... And it's engraved Remington 545-8590, my name, or my initials, D. Hill, and date of manufacture, which was 120. Uh, for whatever reason why I didn't get a retract on the, on the uh, final cut across there, and we've numbered them with number 18, which is the 18th set of heads that I built for the action wrenches. Um, where are we in there? There we go. If I'm running engraving, of course this isn't for a customer, but anything I do for a customer, I run test pieces and everything. This I didn't run a test piece. I um, cycled the code a couple of times without anything in it just to make sure everything was in boundaries and where I wanted it to be. And um, after that I just go ahead and run it. But this set of heads is basically done. I'll go ahead and clean the scale off the rest of it. I'll, I'll round the edges on it and uh, make it a little more presentable and then it'll go in the bluing tank so anyway that's what i do for making a set of of uh, action wrench heads and this was a simple set just a a simple round one but uh, the complex ones are, are no different you just set it up and mill your mill your uh, cuts out and that's what they are so anyway i hope we found a little bit interesting here uh, and if you find anything helpful here go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like them. Any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And thanks for taking the time to watch.